Hello, Redeemer family. Today, let's look together at Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. One of the great truths of the Bible is that we have been adopted into God's family. Two of our six grandchildren are adopted, and our daughter has also been an adoption counselor. So adoption is a very special and a very precious thing to me and to my wife. I find it interesting as I've been studying for this that Paul has used the concept of adoption several times to explain and, and better explain the relationship that we have with God. And one of those places is today in this passage in, in Romans. In the Bible, the concept of adoption is often used by Paul. But today we're going to look at how it's used in regard to our sin nature and the battle that we have against our sin nature. So the first thing I'd like to do is just read this passage from Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified with Him. So just a couple of thoughts concerning adoption as they reflect in, in this passage. Adoption demands great sacrifice on the part of the adopting family. Any of you that have participated in adoption in any way are aware of the countless hours that go into the process and the great financial costs uh, involved in every adoption. In a similar way, our adoption into God's family demanded the ultimate sacrifice of Christ's death which allowed the Spirit to live in us. Another thing that adoption does is it transforms forever the identity of the one being adopted. And we can see this very clearly in this passage. In verse 12, because of adoption, we are no longer debtors to sin. The debt has been paid. The obligation has been canceled. The mortgage has been burned. Then in verse 15, because of adoption, we are no longer slaves to sin. When adopted, we were redeemed from slavery. The slave master no longer has control over our lives. And then finally, in verse 17, because of our adoption, we become heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Christ is the firstborn son, and when adopted, we become fellow heirs with him. He becomes our big brother, who will stand by us on our side uh, in against a, a battle against the flesh. And finally, adoption initiates a new intimacy in this relationship. And I think that is carefully or easily seen in the term that we're allowed to use, Abba, Father. Abba is the more informal term, uh, but also more intimate. And that's the term that we're allowed to use now with our Heavenly Father. I like to think of it in, in relationship with myself and my grandchildren. They can call me grandfather, but they don't. Uh, they call me Papa. Papa is the more informal term. It is the term that is more intimate and it's the term that they use. I'd like to just give you an example of, of how this all kind of works. A few years ago, my adopted granddaughter was out in the strawberry patch. She and her family had gone strawberry picking. A beautiful day. Strawberry picking with the family. And Here's how I understand that it happened. This little girl was sitting there. She had been picking strawberries all morning. The sun was shining on her. She had just found that biggest strawberry that she could find. And it was clear that she had already taken one bite out of it. And she was about ready to take the next bite. And my, my daughter said she looked at her and here this little child was sitting there, sitting there in the middle of the strawberry patch big bite out of the strawberry, strawberry juice flowing down her cheeks, looked up at her mama and said, Mama, this is the good life. Well, of course my daughter had not heard that kind of a philosophical term out of that little girl ever because she's only three years old. And she said, where in the world did you ever hear that? 
To which the little girl says, from Papa. And it's true. Because of the relationship that I have with her, there are many times that after a good day of being together, I would just look at her and say, this is the good life. Because she's my adopted granddaughter, the good life includes the following things. She has the privilege to call me Papa. She has the confidence that when she talks to Papa, Papa's going to listen to her. She has the assurance that the relationship is permanent. She has the expectation that Papa will do whatever it takes to help and protect her. And she has the awareness that if she messes up, Papa will forgive her. Redeemer family, because you have been adopted into God's family, this is the type of intimate relationship that you can ha now have with your God. And as we end this devotional and as you think about the day ahead, I just encourage you to spend some time thanking God for the fact that you're adopted into His family. Thanking Him that He paid that great price, that He transforms your identity, and that you ha now have this new intimacy in your relationship with Him. God bless you and have a great day.